Good morning. Welcome. It is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Um, we have uh, this, this pandemic that's been around for quite a while. We've had all the things we had to get rid of over the years, and we've been kind of slowly taking steps back to whatever normal is. Um, one of the things that we decided this week to start doing again is, is passing the ritual of friendship pad that, that we have. Um, it allows you a chance to, to sign in and, and let us know. <laughs> Rich is saying, no, he's not doing it. He's refusing. So we'll, we'll have a conversation after. <laughs> but as that comes around, I invite you to sign in, mark your attendance with us. Let us know a little bit more about yourself. Um, and we are just glad you're here worshiping with us this morning. Let's open in a word of prayer. Almighty God. We thank and praise you for this beautiful day, for the sunshine, and for the beauty of this earth. We ask that you would be with us as we worship you. Join us and fill us with your spirit, and allow us to hear your truth. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able and join in our call to worship. Our call to worship today is Psalm number 119, verses 1 through 8. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the way of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are, are those who keep God's commandments, who seek God, God with their, their whole heart, heart, who also do no wrong but walk in God's ways. You, you have, have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Amen. And our opening hymn is number 547 in the red hymnal. Uh, it's O Church of God United. This time, we invite the children who want to go to Sunday school, who are, can follow Miss Roberta and whatever games and projects she has for you. 
or you're welcome to sit in here and listen to me drone on and on. <laughs> Parents and grandparents, you don't have an option, I'm sorry. <laughs> let us go to God in confession. Our God is a loving God. Therefore, let us confess our sins that we may choose life and live. Holy God, we confess that we bow down before other gods. We have turned our hearts away from you, our worship of work, devotion to consumerism, disorders our love to you and each other. Forgive us, God, and mend what is broken, that me, we may be one with you. Amen. Sisters and brothers, by the mercy of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Sing praises with an upright heart as we learn the ways of God. Let us pray. God of blessing, you call us to be one with you and with your creation in love, faithfulness, and truth. Help us to carry out the vows we make, to adore you with our whole heart, to live in mutual support of one another, and to love as if your reign has fully come. Amen. Our first reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1-9. through 9. And so, brothers and sisters... I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are not of the flesh, and behaving according to human inclinations. For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labors of each. For we are God's servant, working together, and you are God's field. God's building. The words of God for the people of God. And our next hymn is Freely, Freely, number 389. be seated. And I invite our ushers forward to collect this morning's offering.
Almighty God, we thank and praise you for all that you give us. You give to us freely. We ask that as we give back to you a portion, that you would take these gifts, bless them and use them, multiply them, and allow them to spread your word in this land. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, anoint us with your Holy Spirit as we hear your word this day. Fill us with your truth that we may walk in the ways of God and to the glory of your realm. Amen. Our first reading comes from Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear but are led astray to bow to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall no longer live in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And our gospel reading comes from Matthew 5, verses 21 through 37. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will become liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then Come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard it said you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, Tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It is also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife except on the grounds of unchastity causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your heads, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The word of God for the people of God. So who's ready for the Super Bowl? Got, I, got, I hear a few things. Who's ready for the Eagles? A few, okay. Who's ready for the Chiefs? Who's rooting for the commercials? Oh, and the food. Who's ready for the food? I should throw that in there, too. Who's ready for the food? Now, I don't, I don't think they're as good as they, they used to be, but this is just my opinion. But I do like the Super Bowl commercials. They do try to make something new. But it d just doesn't seem they're as good as they used to be. From what I remember years ago. Now, maybe it's just become unreachable. You know, they, they set the bar too high over the years. 
I remember one from a few years ago. It was a 2011 commercial, and it was the Bridgestone Tire Company. And they made an ad that focused on a couple of guys at work in their shared office cubicle. One of them chuckles a little bit as he sends the other an email. They don't elaborate on what's in this email. But after the other guy receives it, he chuckles briefly too. And then he says, oh no, you hit reply all. You hit reply all. You see the look of panic come over the, the other individual who then runs away from his desk, jumps in his car, and you see the performance of those tires, obviously the tire commercial, as he races from place to place, destroying every computer in sight, jumping out of nowhere, it seems, with the precision of a highly trained ninja, making sure that this email is not seen by anyone, and thus saving his job. He hurries back to his desk, and his co-worker says, Oh, I was wrong. You did send it to just me. Could you imagine if that went to everyone? Our gospel lesson today talks a bit about the standards that God has set for us. And Jesus raises that bar to a very high level. Whatever mystery that email held, it was obviously a problem. And sending it to everyone was crossing some sort of line that was going to get him into trouble. Kind of in that same way, Jesus takes some of those lines that people were accustomed to in his day and says, even just thinking about those things causes you to sin. You don't have to actually act upon it. You've already committed the offense. So let's back up a little bit and just look at what Jesus is trying to say to the people who have gathered to hear him. This is still a part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus' long sermon given at the beginning of Matthew. We've looked at this over the last few weeks, and we started with the Beatitudes, you might remember, where Jesus lays out what it looks like to follow Jesus. We're called to be meek. We're called to be agents of peace. And we know that sometimes we will be rejected because of Jesus. Then Jesus tells those around him that they are the salt of the earth. They are light in the darkness. This is what we talked about last week. His followers, his church, will be what the world sees. Today we start with verse 21. Last week we read verse 20, which leads into this week's gospel. It was left out this week, but I want to read it to you again. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus calls out the religious leaders of his time. And he says, unless you're more righteous than them, you're not going to make it into heaven. This would be comparable to Jesus popping in here, bringing a group of people, sitting them down and telling them that unless you're more righteous than the people sitting in these pews, you won't make it to heaven. Now, we may take that as a compliment, that Jesus has set the bar, it's the standard, here we are. These are the people you were trying to reach. But as we go a little further, Jesus takes the laws that the religious leaders clung to and said, it's not enough. You have heard it said, you shall not murder. It's one of the Ten Commandments. We all know it's wrong. But Jesus says, just being angry with someone is enough for you to commit murder in your heart. You're already guilty even though you haven't done anything. Have we all been angry? I'm guilty. <laughs> we don't actually have to press send on that email. Just thinking about it has already convicted us. Simply calling somebody a fool, he says, is enough to be guilty of murder. He also goes into adultery and divorce and, and making oaths. And raising the standard for each one of those. Now why would Jesus push these standards so incredibly high? The Ten Commandments are already pretty tough. But I think we can manage those usually. Love God, don't steal, don't murder, don't commit adultery, etc. The bar that Jesus sets though is really impossible for us, isn't it? 
Soren Kierkegaard, and I'm probably butchering that name, has a quote, though, that says, Most people really believe that the Christian commandments, for example, to love one's neighbor as oneself, are intentionally a little too severe, like putting a clock a half hour ahead to make sure you're not late in the morning. Maybe, I guess. Is this what God is trying to do, to give us a buffer? I know I often have to do this at work. I know how things go around the shop. I know the chaos that occurs on a daily basis. And if I need to be out by 5, I tell everyone I need to leave at 4. I just know how it's going to go, and I need that hour buffer. But I don't think that this is why Jesus sets the bar so high. You see, we can't reach the standards that Jesus set. And this was Jesus' point. The scribes and Pharisees prided themselves on their good works. They didn't need a savior. They had the law. And they kept it flawlessly. At least when people were watching. Jesus tells them and us that that's not enough. But you see, this is where the message of grace comes in. Once we realize that we can't earn God's favor or God's forgiveness, we learn that we don't have to. While Jesus set the bar high, he also paid the price for us and through grace made a way and redeemed us. So does this mean that we don't have to live to a high standard? I mean, Jesus already made a way, so do we even need to try? I think, like Jesus taught, it's a matter of the heart. Just like you don't actually have to commit murder, your thoughts are enough. In the same way, we are going to falter, we're going to fail. It's in our human nature. But when we recognize the grace of Jesus in our lives... Our hearts should strive to do right by God. Our inward most desires should be to reflect Jesus in all that we do. Our outward actions will follow suit. This is how we become the salt of the earth and the light in the darkness for the world to see Jesus. A clergy friend of mine posted a quote the other day on Facebook that that really struck me. It's from a, a pastor and author named Michael Slaughter. He says, We have dumbed down what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Our churches consist of members who have little to do with following Jesus. We've turned church into a noun, a stationary building that we visit once a week or maybe once a month for many of us instead of a living, functioning, working community of Jesus-following believers. The church has redefined faithfulness as simply showing up for worship, making a donation, and going back home to our regular lives. Instead of being disciples who demonstrate an undiluted devotion to Jesus as Lord, we have domesticated and watered down Jesus' true identity. Pastor Slaughter is saying... That the, the church today has really lowered the standards that Jesus set. Jesus was radical. We don't always like to think of that, but in the deepest sense, he pushed against what his ta culture taught. And I think we tend to miss that sometimes today. Jesus calls, her, calls us to love with a greater love. A love that mimics God and not our culture. Jesus has raised the standards, yes, to a level that we cannot achieve right now, but he has also given us abundant grace. Let us, as individuals, accept the grace fully. Let us learn to love others as Jesus loves us. As a church, let us learn to be the salt of the earth, and the light in the darkness, that others may also come to know Jesus. And let us recognize the radical ways in which Jesus pushes us 
from our comfort zones, the ways in which we are called to love and serve and trust in all that we do. Amen. Our hem of response is love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you. As we head into a time of prayer, you can just go ahead and leave this screen up. Um, we will do the response of prayer in a minute. But I do want to take a minute. Um, I did forward on, on Facebook earlier this week a letter from a bishop uh, regarding the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. So I'd like to share that letter with you real quick, and we're going to spend a special time in prayer for those affected by that. No matter what else may be going on within the church or even within the lives, their lives, United Methodists have a rich history of reaching out to help others in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ. When we see suffering, we want to bring hope and healing. The images coming from Turkey and Syria following the devastating earthquakes tug at our hearts and bring us to tears. To hear the cry of parents who've lost children, to watch as they hold the hand of a child otherwise buried in rubble, moves us deeply. The United Methodist Committee on Relief, or UMCOR, is already offering hope and healing through its ministry partners. Initial solidarity grants have been released to provide tents, heaters, blankets, warm clothes, ready-to-eat meals, and first aid kits to those who have been displaced. Please read the news story published yesterday by clicking the link below and be sure to follow UMCOR's Facebook page for the latest updates. A link on how you can join others in financially supporting this response by donating to UMCOR is also found below. I know you will offer your deepest prayers to those suffering, and I know you want to help join others in helping. Thank you for your caring and generous hearts. Grace and peace. David Allen Bard, Michigan Area Bishop. We, um, we talk quite a bit about UMCOR. Um, we take our, our yearly offering, and, and I mentioned it that at those times that that yearly offering helps fund the UMCOR uh, system so that when events like this happen, 100% of donations go directly to those in need. Um, they are always mobilized and ready to be at the forefront of these events, bringing tents and, and all the things that they need right now. It's a, um, 
I know it's a pretty dire situation. Um, Syria, with their internal conflicts they've had for a little over a decade now, um, was already struggling badly, and this has just even uh, made things a lot worse. So we want to lift them up in, in prayer, and um, we do know that UMCOR is collecting. If you do have additional you'd want to give to that effort, uh, we can definitely forward that on to UMCOR. We can talk later. So let's go in prayer. Almighty God, you hear the cries of your people around the world. And in the midst of turmoil and disaster, we know that you have not abandoned us. This world is far from perfect. And we see every day more and more that, that tells us the end is near. But we know that the hope is that you are coming. The hope is that you are making a new heaven and a new earth. That you are making all things right. And we look for that day. In the meantime, we cry out to you. And we ask you to be present in these situations. Fill the people with your peace. Fill us with the desire to help. Gracious God, we ask that, that you would make the church your hands and feet. That your radical love would be shown to all those who are suffering. Bring healing. Bring rebuilding. And may your love shine through. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us continue with our responsive prayer as we pray for the health and vitality of the church. God, you command us to honor you by loving one another. Yet all too often there is quarreling and jealousy among us. Help us to live your law of love as we seek to grow into the full stature of Christ. Loving God, help us to turn our hearts toward you. We pray for the welfare of the world. You have blessed us with every skill and gift for nurturing the common good. Yet out of our self-centered ways, we incline our hearts toward evil. Strengthen us to work together for the mutual benefit of neighbors near and far and for the life of prosperity of your reign on earth. Loving God, help us to turn our hearts toward you. We pray for all who suffer and are in need. You call us to care for one another with compassion and steadfast love. Yet we wither in the face of anguish and brokenness. Equip us for the work of reconciliation, that we might offer hope and healing in the power of your name. Loving God, help us to turn our hearts toward you. We pray for all who are sick and in need of your healing. May your will for them be fulfilled. Fill us with your mercy and kindness that we may care for them with loving hearts. As you bring them to the wholeness of your peace. Loving God, help us turn our hearts toward you. We commend all of life to you, O oh God, knowing that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And let us continue to pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. At any time I don't know what to do. 
I will cast all my cares upon you. So earlier this week, as I was looking at planning service and getting things figured out, I stumbled upon We Are the Church. I did not know We Are the Church was in the hymnal, folks. We've, we sang it a couple times. I've, I wrote the words down. We did like the first one and, and the, the We Are the Church, and then, and then we kind of went back through it. It's number 558 in the hymnal. Always learning. And I see a few of you chuckling. How did you not know We Are the Church in the hymnal? I guess it, it never appeared. So with that kind of being the theme over the last few weeks, I want us to sing We Are, we are the Church, all five verses of We Are the Church. So it's number 558. I invite you to join along. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages to all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's barely, it's breaking, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, Yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world, all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Please be seated. And yes, there are five verses in the hymnal. <laughs> when I heard it get quiet, I said, oh, I better look. And <laughs> we are the church. Let me, this whole pile of stuff here. I have some uh, announcements I want to share with you, and a couple of them are ways in which we are the church. Yes, well, go, go. <laughs> Cheer, she's cheering the church on, folks. <laughs> Um, have a, a couple of opportunities for us to continue to be the church. Um, one of the ways, I have a letter, um, the pause pantry that we were working on, it's still a work in progress and how it's all going to function, but we have um, a, a letter here that the TUMC pause pantry is now available to service our community. Our mission is to help those who may need assistance in order to keep their beloved pets. Donations of dry cat and dog food, wet cat and dog food, treats, puppy pads, leashes, etc., would be greatly appreciated and can be left in the sailor room on the back table for those who come in to use our food pantry. Later this week, an outdoor bench, aka the donation station, will be set up outside where both food can be both donated and taken as an on needed, as an, it's written right, I'm stumbling over the words, on an as needed basis. Um, thank you for your support. It's one of the ways that we can be the church. Um, we also were, um, I want to remind you about our, our Readers to Leaders campaign. Um, there are some flyers by the back door. 
our cookie walk money is going toward this and uh, we're, we're still, I think, developing a, uh, a fund to support the leaders in our local community uh, through the book fair and things like that. So um, that's another way in which we are the church. Um, and we also, we continue to collect pop cans for heifer. Uh, we see the, the bins downstairs. We haven't mentioned that in a little while. Um, this Wednesday, we, we talked about the money that we have set aside, and our goal is to try and reach $300 by Easter um, in pop cans. So if you have pop cans and you don't want to go wait in line and return them, Dan loves returning pop cans. I, I, I've heard that he just loves it, and he will gladly return your pop cans and give it to Heifer to support um, hungry people around the world and, and give them a, a sustainable way of supporting themselves. Uh, we have coffee hour following church. Uh, Dan and Roberta are down there getting that prayer prepped right now for us. Uh, so we invite you to stick around for Valentine's Day coffee hour. Um, it says trustees today. There's still a few quotes that um, Sherry was working up with a, a couple things. So she said we're not going to have one this week, but uh, in a couple of weeks we may have to call one to go through some things from there. So she'll keep us informed on that. Um, See the food, uh, community supper this Wednesday at five uh, five o'clock at the First Lutheran Church. Do uh, you have enough food? Oh yeah, got enough food. So <laughs> come on by. Um, and then next Sunday, um, Judy, Judy it looks like is doing coffee hour. And, and last week I had to take a lot of leftovers home, so I will definitely be here next week for coffee hour. And my wife is looking at me saying, "You are not taking leftovers home again." <laughs> it was all sugar free. Bolo she did not have bologna. <laughs> um, and then, reminder is just over a week, we have Ash Wednesday coming up. So February 22nd at noon, we will have a short service of reflection and ashes. So I invite you to come by on Wednesday at noon, uh, February 22nd. Not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. With that, let me offer the benediction and we can go get some treats. Go forward being the church in our community. Go forward knowing that the standards have been set very high, but through the grace of Jesus, we have been made his church. Share the love of God in, your name, in his name. Amen. Here I am. Have a blessed week and we'll see you downstairs.